Now, you might have heard or seen that report by UNICEF, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the World Food Programme, suggesting that food shortages in Nigeria are at crisis levels, and even with humanitarian aid, at least one in five households in the target areas of the northern, southeastern, and southwestern regions face food consumption deficits and malnutrition at higher rates than normal. Well, now the Commodities Association of Nigeria, the Cow, Pea and Beans Association and the National Interest Forum have joined in the warning. They say the worst affected states are Borno, Adamawa and Yobe in the northeast where food production has been decimated by the prolonged insurgency. Nearly three million people there are said to be in urgent need of assistance. The key driver of insecurity is also affecting other regions, with banditry in the northwest and north-central zones hitting hard. Across the country, soaring food prices and the lingering effects of the pandemic have led to disruptions in food production and distribution and have deeply affected the availability of food to many households. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the Vice Chairman of the Commodities Association of Nigeria, Shetu Mohammed, who is also Chairman of the Cow, Pea and Beans Association and Chairman of Nigeria's National Interest Forum. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. Good afternoon. So Nigeria is facing a problem of food shortages during this Christmas season, and it's not just the international aid agencies saying it. You've joined them in both uh, in your capacity as both chairman of the Cow, Pea and Beans Association and vice chairman of the Commodities Association and also in your capacity as the owner of a large farm. Tell us more. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, as a chairman of Cow, Pea and Beans and the vice chairman of Federation of Agricultural Commodity Association of Nigeria, uh, we've observed f internally and outside and we've seen that there are various crises that being bedeviling Nigeria uh, we just come out of the COVID and uh, after oh, we're still in COVID yeah, we're still in COVID yeah. we are going to uh, the fourth mm. uh, set of the COVID uh, that first of all drive all of us out from our farms mm. to start instead of driving taking us to the farm people run out of farm although some of us will go back to the farm and uh, now you see that uh, we are having crisis here and there and the northeast you see that borno has been in that uh, crisis for over 10 to 50 years now so in this capacity you find out that uh, uh, it is now for Nigerians and the government to sit and look at how we can now come out of this. Many countries have found themselves in this before. Mm. When we get into COVID, some of us come out to say that is a big opportunity for us. Just to, to, to make sure to make the point that your phone is what's ringing there, is yeah. it? Because it's on vibrate instead of being on yes, silent. Yes. So let's not get too alarmed can about I, it. Um, one of you can come and take the, pho the phone out. But sorry, <laughs> keep saying what you're saying. Okay. Now, uh, we believe that we should turn it to opportunity. To opportunity in the sense that we must move our people back to the rural area. Mm. We must allow our people to Don't. see advantage mm -hmm. instead of seeing it as disadvantage. Now, uh, the crisis in the northeast and the northwest is a matter of well, since 2006. We've told Nigerians this forest that we live on touch. If you are talking of uh, 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 that you have to leave those forests, the trees that we planted in those uh, forests are not of use to Nigeria. Mm. And that is why you see these people got chance of taking people into those forests. Kidnapping, right. so what do you crisis, 
what we suggest is that we have to clear those forest now right if we want to grow tree there are cash crop trees that can still be grow even these beans if you are growing beans it fertilize the land mm. so the issue of encroachment of uh, 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 a mother it's not there it's right so, so so what your as associations like yours the Commodities Association, Cowpea and Beans Association, what you're advising the government to do is to cut the trees down. And, and I mean, obviously, the, the government is focusing on finding a massive injection of humanitarian assistance, which is in the short term, because, I mean, the, the hunger is already there and the deprivation is already there. They're, they're, they're saying, right, we must do this immediately in order to help people that's also what the international aid agencies are focusing on but you're saying that in the medium to long term what needs to be done is what you're suggesting yeah we are suggesting that instead of moving people into urban area mm. we can now start mass movement or mass uh, mo moving people back to the rural area yeah, but in order to and do making that, the rural to make area the places secure that it? is why you make the rural area attractive yeah but that's and easier said than done isn't it's it? not easier said it takes it takes not only government even individuals like i'm doing on my own personal ground where we have started we have our farm we find out that the problem we have is that we export raw materials and then we buy back uh, finished goods. Mm. We said, okay, I've established. So you want to establish the value chain. Value chain. chain. Right. Because but but you were telling me earlier that you're having problems at your farm because of insurgency yeah, because and, and banditry and all the rest of it. Definitely. What I'm saying. So how are you going to get people to move back in those circumstances? Good. You see, we have to now, every country have is peculiar. Right. Nigeria must now think out of box even if it means in moving people down back to the rural area and making rural area attractive yeah you have to first of all make sure that you have numbers of their uh, security and this you can tell military to employ more hands yeah well and those well, more hands can you can have the farm yeah uh, department within the military within our military yeah but th those are those are sort of things that have been talked about quite a bit and, and i i see the point you're making but we want you to give us as a farm owner yourself a large farm owner give us a sense of the impact that all this has had on your work because for instance farm workers who are essential part of your output I understand that many of them are no longer going to those farms and I imagine there's a lot of waste in 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 the in, in the in production because I mean no one is there to properly tend to those farms yes uh, we talk of the insurgency you t because you are not safe even when you are in the farm mm. you are afraid that you could be kidnapped and not only kidnapping you that matters they harass you they they they, they what they do whatever mm. before they even take the money we sleep with your wife while you are looking and they, they, they in fact they dehumanize you so basically a lot of your so farm workers have run away they have to run away right. because they could not withstand yeah. those things and that and is I, why and I, right go on and that's why we are bringing the solution the solution to this is that we must not leave it only in the hands of government. Government must put enabling environment. And how do you put enabling environment? If you see a problem and you run out of that problem, that problem continue. Then we are thinking of how do we arrest it? If I'm in my farm and I'm able to say, okay, probably what give those insurgents more harm mm. is that they have arms. People are ready to attack them, but people cannot take arms. Why can't we open up our military and police and employ mass young Nigerians and then train them 
they could be a farmer. They well, I mean, in fairness to the government, they, they've talked quite volubly about employing many more police. Yes. Um, I mean, uh, quite a few thousands, really. Yeah. And, and but, then, but obviously, that doesn't happen overnight. And then those forests where they hide mm. and do the, the take up the criminality, clear them for now. In fact, even trees in those forests that we, are, mm. we don't want to clear are already old trees. Put off, let economic activities start coming up from those forests. As soon as you have economic activities coming up, and let me give you an example like Ore Forest. What are we doing with Ore Forest? When we can plant coffee or cocoa. Mm. And then instead of us to export those raw material, because what really brought this insecurity is lack of employment. Right. The Poverty young people, so you every year you chunk up graduates yeah. they don't have work and of course all this some is of now them go into the uh, right. sea in trying to go to see a green pasture they die millions mm. every day on our high right. so all this of course so leading to it, rising yes. food prices it's, it's it? right because i mean because, they, because you don't have enough food, food the prices now. are getting and then up. now we have to import mm. how are we sure that we can import because every country is now high, keeping their own uh, reserves COVID is coming, mm. you now have Om 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 Omicron that is coming now. So Many basically a perfect storm of, of adverse effects and your sense is that a lot of people are going to have a, a pretty bleak Christmas. This Definitely. Christmas. Okay, I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, uh, Shitu Mohammed, who is uh, chairman of the Cowpea and Beans Association. Uh, Vice Chairman of the Commodities Association of Nigeria and Chairman of Nigeria's National Interest Group. Thank you very much. Thank you.